Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am doing an acrylic painting on this piece of plywood. It's a wood panel. It's A5 size and I have put some gesso on one side. Now this is Thalo Turquoise High Flow Acrylic Paint. A bit like an acrylic ink. And I'm just using a card to sweep the paint up in different directions to spread it out. But to keep some randomness in with it as well. This is yellow ochre high flow acrylic paint. So um, I like to try different ways to start the abstract paintings so that I don't get too into a formula with it. And also, starting it in different ways takes it to different places. So these dry pretty quick because I have put them out very flat as well. I've, you know, I've spread them very flat with the card. That is cadmium lemon yellow. And I thought, let's turn it so we go in a different direction this time. So I think as well, having a different starting point is quite refreshing to work with. And so I find that that helps with the sort of creativity and, you know, the enjoyment of it. Because when you look at things a bit differently, you make different decisions. So I'm just putting in some connecting lines at this point just to see what sort of shapes can be made from what's there just now. There's no, there's, there's no rhyme or reason for the points that I'm choosing to put together, but these thalo turquoise, they're, they're quite long rectangles, and I think that they stand out more because of the shape that they've created rather than the fact that they're not, a yellowy colour. So I used a china marker to make the shape outlines and now I'm using um, transparent raw umber acrylic ink. I will list all the supplies in the description box as per usual. Now these ended up to me like three people. The thalo turquoise is like their heads and then these triangle shapes are like their bodies. So I'm quite into making drips just now, but not just random spray water at them drips, controlled drips that go in directions of my choosing. Now that is Flow Improver. It cost me £10. It's by Windsor & Newton. And you, I'm really using it in place of water. But I find that I like how it keeps the pigment load so the colour shouldn't fade when this is added to it. And I also find that the brush glides with it. It's very, um, I like how it feels. And it also, you can use a lot less paint with this, but you can still also use water to do the same job. So that was Thalo Blue red shade I think plus yellowish green and you can see there it's quite a primary green I feel not primary secondary green is what it's called but it's it's quite a childlike colour so that I've added in some black and some white just to try and make it a bit more mature and also it's going to give me different values of it because of the black and the white. So this turns out to be quite a grey green. A big part of what I'm doing in this picture is I'm trying to bring all the colours together. So I've used the cadmium lemon yellow, the yellow ochre, thalo blue and that yellowish green in this colour combination for the people's outfits. So 
So you can see here as well, this is quite a thick application compared to the high flow acrylic paints that I used at the start. And what I'm doing as well is, so there's the three triangles making the three people, but there's segments within those triangles. So I'm just trying to add in subtle differences. But my brush strokes, I'm using my brush strokes to try and make it clear what person it belongs to. These are just the thoughts I'm having while I'm doing it. It's it's abstract. It's really, I'm just trying to tell a story of what's in my mind about it using different techniques that I know. And one day I'll know more techniques, I'll learn more. <laughs> but you see there, there's just a subtle change in that green. I end up wasting a lot of paint here and I wish that I had a big canvas set up because I would have put all that paint on it. I've put out far too much for what I was doing. However, I did need the variety in the colours to make this green. So when you're using a few different colours to make one colour, there is going to be wastage because it's hard to make those colours with just tiny, tiny little bits of paint. So at this stage, there's not been any plan. There's no... I still don't know where the painting's going, but I do know that I feel like there's three people standing, talking to each other. And that's something that I'm emphasising and I'm using it as a kind of base for this picture but the sort of area surrounding them and what the situation is etc none of that's been I've not even thought about any of that yet it just I find that joining points together to create new shapes and new lines it gives it dimension and that's what helps build the story overall of the picture. And these are quite cool colours just now, so they're not going into, you know, they're quite fresh and they work well with each other. Even the yellow ochre. So I'm just doing some faint marks with that china marker. The blue picture next to this is just picking up the paint from the gel plate. So I've kind of got a, a layer of shapes and then I'm looking at where more shapes can be created that will add to it. I find that I go through phases and this joining points together is quite new to me it's not something that I have done a lot of before but I have found that it gives me I feel more pleased with the abstract art that I'm creating using this approach but there's lots of different approaches that you can use So that's me just enhancing the brushwork a bit. This is a skewer that's quite blunt and I've just sort of put some lines on to mimic the brush strokes. So horizontal to the middle person and vertical to the person on the right. I've really got a great love for abstract. I love looking at paintings and trying to decide what I think is happening because a lot of the times they can have more than one meaning. So this is pyrrole red 
which is also one of my favourite colours at the moment. I just, I love the shade of the red. It's not pink and it's not orange. It's very opaque. It's very strong. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying it, but then while it's still wet, I pat some of it back off. This is just to give it more transparency because the layers that are underneath, it's important to me that they show through in some areas of this painting. This is a fluid paint from Golden and also I have added in some of the Flow Improver, which will make it more transparent. One thing I do love is I really, really love highly, brightly coloured paintings. I don't know what it is, but when I do more neutral ones, they feel unfinished and they feel like they're not strong enough to tell a story. However, when I look at other people's paintings with just neutral colours, I feel very inspired by them. I actually want to try and do it myself. So here, another thing as well with the colours and the shapes, it's, it's creating composition, but it's also trying to have balance. It's important to have, like that red's very strong, so you want that red as, you know, it's dominant, so it needs to be a feature in the painting, not just an all-over colour. But you still need to have little bits of it in other areas just to create balance. And it doesn't necessarily need to be on its own as, you know, as pyro red. It can be added in, like for example, if I added a little bit of it to the yellow ochre to make a kind of orange, well that's it being added in in other areas. So I'm making a sort of pink colour here and I, I think it's a beautiful shade of pink. And it's quite hard to see because I'm kind of working in glazes. So see when I add in the white, I know that the paint's going to be a lot more opaque and wherever I put it down, it is going to cover the majority of what's underneath it. I'm just using the back of the paintbrush to score into that to see what would happen. I didn't do a lot of scoring into the paint to be honest but this was actually quite a simple one for me because I really only used acrylic paints, brushes and some of the inks in high flow. That's it. I love the variety of mixed media. I think it's actually much more exciting to use but sometimes I feel like I need to push myself more with just one medium so that's me just extending that red triangle out and adding in the pink at the side To me, I think at this stage, I get a kind of circus feel off of this painting. And I think it's the, the sort of harlequin shapes that have been created with the green, pink and red. And now the white. <laughs> what I'm doing here is, I like to make lots of chaos and mess in it, but then I like to choose areas to tidy up. And that's what I'm doing here just now. Because that helps emphasise the chaos and the complexities in other areas. Whereas if it was all chaotic, it it would lose its impact. Not always, some abstract paintings, that is what it's like. So I'm just blending that light pink and the white together. And again, pulling some of it back off. So this is black acrylic ink. And this is quite... This is me really establishing 
become possession now because that black acrylic ink is, is very dominant. It's not easily removed. <laughs> So I love the shape that has been created from this. I think it's very, um, you know, it's very simple, it's very bold, but I also think that it's gave, I love the composition of it. I love, I love the way the page has been divided up by it. I think it also marries in with the layers that had been created before I added the black acrylic ink because it's definitely that big shape in the middle. I, I do feel that the black acrylic ink has mimicked the outline of that. And when I was talking as well about joining points together, I like um, relationships. I do think it's really important to for your sh shapes, your colours, etc. to have relationships to each other. And for me, that's part of my thought processes with abstract art because I think a lot of situations and events and just things that are important to us as humans, a lot of it is built on the relationships that we have. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually changing the colours around. Now, if I'd just put this red down without everything that had gone before, it wouldn't have the same effect. It would just be flat. Near the black acrylic ink as well, there's, there will be slight different colours left as well. You can obviously see there's darker areas and lighter areas under the red. I think it's things like that that help a painting um, look good and, and be more interesting to look at. I like creating a history of the painting, even if it's just one or two layers. So this is the tall skinny guy's head and I'd got a bit too much paint on it so I'm just taking it back off with some water and this cotton swab. I'm also using these little tiny paint brushes which goes against everything I normally do. I much prefer big paint brushes because th there is less control. But today I've used little ones. Another thing, when I spin the video around, that indicates that there's been drying time. So I'm just covering all the pink with white and then I cover that top red triangle with pink. And I think that pink as well, the, the tone of it, the shade of it, I'm not sure what the technical term is. I do think it works very well with the green. So I found myself lately, when I really started first kind of exploring abstract art and trying to learn about it and, you know, try and pick up different techniques, processes, the type of pictures that I was drawn to. You know, I liked them to be chaotic and messy over the whole page or the whole canvas or whatever. But I find myself now liking to have some areas that are quite tidy and then other areas that are very chaotic. And I find that they help to create balance by having the tidy area and the chaotic area. So at this, this stage, I'm kind of having the idea that these are three people that are sitting at a table 
or waiting to be seated at a table in a restaurant and that the three white orbs are their plates. That's the that's my thinking at the moment. Mostly I tend to not have any sort of representational aspect to the paintings. I normally like to have um it's more representative of emotion or movement or just the suggestion of something representational something real um but i fair enjoyed this today and i do think it's important to have variety and i'm still trying to find my style where, where i kind of you can look at it and think oh that's one of um kirsten's paintings so this is thalo blue and pyro red mixed together. Um, it's very dark, but I wanted that I, for all those layers underneath that red. It's very flat, and so my my thought was that the red and the purple should work well together and add a lot of depth into this area. So. I'm kind of thinking, right, this could be like a table at the moment, but it doesn't it doesn't stay that way. It's just what I was thinking when I was painting it. It's beautiful though. That purple's almost velvety looking, isn't it? And it's so dark. It's actually too dark for the rest of the painting. But it's okay just now because, you know, we go over it. I like the people, I like the fact that we've had a few layers, like glaze layers going over the people's heads because their heads have now got a lot of colour in them. And that gives them character. It also gives the illusion of facial features and kind of what way their heads tilted. I'm watching myself using this small paintbrush and I'm thinking, why did you not use the big one to do the big area? But I do use the big one after because there it is there. What I do is it's quite wet and what I, I'm doing here is I'm trying to apply it in such a way that it come, more of it comes back off and I'm just putting the tiniest little hint of that purple up in another area. So that's tissue paper that I'm using just to try and um, remove some of the purple. I like as well, there, there's there's a flatness to this painting, but this kind of purple red area has a shine to it. And I don't know why that's happened. Maybe it's because there's been no white used there and it's because they're all kind of transparent. I'm just fiddling about at that stage, just trying to work out how I want this red-purple area to be. So again, trying to make a tiny little table for three people. <laughs> it's not working. It's not sitting right. But that's another thing that I love about not having plans or intentions. You try things and what happens is they end up actually becoming part of the painting. Or they take you in another direction.
That's me getting more water for this paintbrush. Do you know, see with that purple underneath that red with the tiny little bit of cadmium lemon yellow, it's just, it really, do you know, it's really lifted the mood of this painting. So what I'm doing now is, I still feel that that red area, it's a very big area. And I thought, let's mimic the white orbs. So in my mind, those, the big white orbs are like plates for in the restaurant and then these are sort of like polka dots on the tablecloth or um food products just something to emphasize this is the table area um but it didn't turn out like that <laughs> you can see as well see because that red and purple underneath the white the white acrylic ink is actually merging with those other colours and they're making beautiful patterns. So at this point I'm thinking, right, white table legs. And then, so I end up trying to blend that back into the background. And what this has done actually is, it looks like where all the polka dots are, that's the surface of the table and then this area at the bottom is you know the side of the table it's given that illusion of using light and shadow those wee circles do look amazing I'm going to try more of that the acrylic ink on top of a couple layer of layers of wet acrylic paint just to see if I can get the same sort of reaction so now I've decided that they're going to be like eggs that are fried that when you're on holiday and you go down for your breakfast and you go to you're waiting on the eggs if you're wanting eggs for your breakfast and that's what's happened here so I'm tipping this ever so gently that white acrylic ink takes a long time to dry. So the little ones on the surface of the tabletop, I don't want them moving too much. But I want the ones that are on the side of the table to be elongated and stretched out as if they are falling to the ground. Go for a kind of surreal, surrealist look. And then I'm just using the skewer to join them together a bit. So I'm liking this so far when it, it's quite tidy in the tabletop, but it looks like the staff and the customers are all distracted and the eggs are just um, falling off out of control. <laughs> quite humorous. So when this is dried, I will add in some cadmium lemon yellow dots as well. Now, if you don't have the acrylic ink or the high flow acrylic paint, you could just do this with a paintbrush or the end of the skewer or something. I do spend a wee bit of time here just to show you how I'm kind of applying it and lifting it back off because... It's almost like a gel consistency. So it's not like you squeeze the bottle on and off. It kind of is, it doesn't lift off easily. It lifts off with kind of part of the paint still stuck to it. So it's hard to just make an egg yolk. Patience, that is what was needed. This is one of my favourite paintings that I've made. It actually made me feel um, light-hearted. 
And it made me think about holidays, which is always good. But the other thing as well is if you were making this and you wanted it to be a bit more serious or maybe something you'd prefer to hang up. Does it need to be fried eggs? It could be a flowery tablecloth. I just went with fried eggs because it was funny. <laughs> so what I do now just to finish it off is I'm adding in some of that phthalo turquoise. I'm putting a very, 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 very thin glaze of it over the table area, the red area. And the reason I'm doing that is because it it's obviously a feature of the men, not the men, the people's heads are made of the thalo turquoise and I just want to have a hint of it elsewhere and we don't. I take all this back off with tissue paper and the eggs are completely dried. You couldn't do this if they were still wet. They'd be smearing everywhere. But do you see how easily that comes back off? But there's just this hint of it in there. So this is going to be more opaque because I've added white and it might be a, a bit more difficult to take back off. But I just wanted, I, I was willing to take the risk. I think it was important to have a slightly lighter shade of it on the tabletop. So this is just to enhance that. There is a top to the table and there is a side to the table. So that's just water I'm putting over there because there's a cloudiness now that I don't want there. But do you see the way that the, the turquoise is clung on to the kind of the outer edges of the table. I was just adding some hints of it to see what would happen. I quite like that. And that's just water again. It's like a dance. A lot of the techniques you use, you use them over and over. So I'm just adding a little bit of that mixture to the people's clothes as well. And that's us. That's us finished with it, I'm sure. So there we go. I'm calling it chaos at the fried egg buffet <laughs> so um thanks very much for watching and i hope you enjoyed and i hope you like it and i hope to see you soon bye take care bye